Hello? Okay, it's working. Um, hello, everyone, and good morning. It's a uh, delight to be speaking to you all at Cannabis Europa this morning um, for a topic that I think is really, really important and, um, and very timely. Um, as Anuj introduced us, uh, yeah, today, this morning, we'll be speaking about a pilot diversion scheme um, in London and what this could mean for, um, for the UK and for wider policy reform. Um, so a quick introduction from myself. Uh, my name is Katja Kowalski and I'm head of operations at VoltFAS, which is a drug policy think tank and advocacy organization focused on reducing the harms of drugs. Uh, and our focus has always been on kind of trying to broaden out the drug policy discussion, uh, bringing in new faces, new voices, and new arguments into the debate uh, to try and see uh, meaningful change. And this morning, joining me, um, joining me is Damien Egan, who's the mayor of Lewisham, and Dr. Kojo Koram, who is a lecturer in law at Birkbeck University of London. Uh, now, before I kind of open up to the discussion and start a bit of a discussion, I think it's really important to lay the foundations as to what, uh, what this scheme is and kind of how it came about. Um, so at the beginning of the year, uh, Mayor Sadiq Khan came out in support of uh, drug diversion schemes amongst 18 to 24 year olds um, off the back of a policy report uh, that Voltfast uh, was commissioned to, uh, to write and investigate um, on the disproportionate amount of arrests um, and over-representation of uh, BAME, BAME communities um, for low-level drug offenses. And we published a series of recommendations off the back of this to address this issue. And Sadiq Khan came out in support, announcing that this scheme um, would be um, looking to be piloted in uh, three London boroughs, where under 25-year-olds caught in the possession of a small amount of cannabis um, wouldn't be arrested, but put through a diversion scheme um, receiving appropriate um, intervention, whether that be education or rehabilitation. Um, but unfortunately, due to the fact that the report was leaked, a significant amount of misinformation was circulated um, in the media, kind of conflating terms of decriminalization, diversion, and I even saw kind of discussions around legalization, uh, which led to a lot of sensationalism around the actual goals of the scheme. Uh, so it's really important to distinguish between what these things mean. Uh, diversion, of course, is a, um, a police-led program where individuals are put through um, alternative measures rather than being put through the justice system, whereas decriminalization um, sees the um, status of criminality taken away from the offense, um, meaning that um, uh, a drug possession is no longer a criminal offense. Um, so given, given the amount of uh, kind of leak... Um, coverage uh, around this. Uh, the media rarely kind of clarified the fact that this was a pilot scheme um, and not kind of a wide-scale policy change, which led to a lot of uh, conflation and condemnation amongst policymakers, uh, despite these schemes already existing up and down the country. Um, so yeah, this panel is going to focus on issues of social justice, um, the over-representation um, of BAME communities in the justice system, and really taking a deep dive as to what this, what this means for wider reform. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to stop speaking. <laughs> um, and first off, I'd like to ask Kojo, um, when it comes to diversion in the UK, how important is it from a racial justice perspective that um, schemes uh, like the one proposed in London are implemented? Brilliant. Um... Thank you, Kat. Yeah, and thank you, Damien, for being in conversation with me. It's great to be speaking with you all here today. Um, I think that the introduction that you gave, which really clarified the distinction between diversion schemes, decriminalization, and legalization, is something that was really lost in the sensationalism around the leaking of the story in terms of the diversion schemes in London. I mean, diversion schemes are police-led schemes that are already present across the country, whether we think about Durham, whether we think about Avon and Somerset, whether we think about Devon and Cornwall, we already have diversion schemes in place, and the importance of them is because we understand that out of all of the different criminalized drugs, cannabis is the one that facilitates contact with the criminal justice system more than any other, and this isn't something that is just simply 
hypothetical. This was evidenced by the United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime report in 2018, which saw cannabis as the leading cause through which people get contact into the criminal justice system. And not just in terms of incarceration, which not a lot of people in the UK do get imprisoned for personal use, but in many other instances of being encountered in criminal justice, most prominently perhaps stop and search. It's estimated that one in three stop and searches that occur are as a result of suspicion of cannabis. Suspicion of drugs is the number one ground through which stop and searches are facilitated, even though we often talk about stop and search in terms of knife crime. Most people are being stopped and searched because of suspicion of drugs, suspicion of cannabis primarily, and we know the racial disparities in terms of the application of stop and searches, black people being nine times more likely to be stopped and searched than white people in the United Kingdom. And then we can think about other ways in which the policing of cannabis and the criminalization of cannabis can impact on particularly ethnic minority lives as well as lives much more broadly. We know that Suspicion of drugs and drug issues is one of the leading causes of school exclusions in the United Kingdom. Um, the recent horrific story of Child Q, I think, made that combination between school, policing, stop and search, and um, kind of racial targeting really explicit with the young girl who was strip searched for suspicion of cannabis and of course cannabis wasn't even found upon her persons. And so if we think about the the school to prison pipeline that is so often criticized in terms of criminal justice um, advocacy, we can see the role that the criminalization of cannabis can play at the, both the beginning and the end of that pipeline. People being removed from school because of drug issues, which is not a necessary in order to try and arrange their um, education, and then ultimately ending up being stopped and search or being incarcerated due to related drug issues. And so the diversion scheme takes all of that energy and allows police to direct their time and energy into other things that might be more important and allows other um, social uh, institutions who will be better able to intervene in relationship to people who might have problematic substance use, being able to take and being able to encounter those individuals rather than them being diverted into the criminal justice system. So I think it's something that should be embraced. This is of course a pilot scheme and there will be evidence that's produced from it, but I think we need to recognize that this is something that is common all across the country already. And um, the sensationalism, I think, had a lot more to do with the particular dynamics between the mayor's office, the Metropolitan Police, and the role of London as the capital city in terms of the, the national conversation. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, th I think it really shows how kind of relevant cannabis is in this discussion, how, you know, that, that's kind of the first point of, um, of call and kind of uh, an introduction into the criminal justice system that a lot of young people face due to this. Um, okay, moving on to, to you, Damien, as, I guess, uh, from a, a, a broader kind of perspective in this, as mayor, what do you think can kind of feasibly be done to address these issues, um, I guess particularly in your borough? So, um, first of all, I wish we'd had that introduction when we had the leak to the story, because there was so much drama and sensationalism around it. I was on holiday, it was over New Year's, and the Telegraph had leaked conversations that, that we'd been having in, in Lewisham Borough with the, with the Mayor's Office and with, and with MOPAC. And it was, a, it was a bit of a shock, because when you actually explain the diversion scheme, and what it is to people, you find that people get it, and actually there, there, is, there is very broad support, and in fact, polling, polling shows that, and that's the same in Lewisham. However, what we found quite quickly was that you had um, 15 Conservative MPs, um, including ministers, signing letters against it. It rattled people in the Labour Party as well, who felt that something had just been kind of thrust, thrust upon it. But, we are going through that process of explaining it, and I, and I think winning, winning the argument is a big issue in Lewisham. Lewisham, my borough, um, it's one of the most diverse places in London, and I know it's fine, I've been there four years. More and more, people were, people were talking about this as an issue. It started off as kind of like 
individual incidents of we had key workers who were getting stopped in search and their cars getting pulled over, which, which for me, I can't imagine that happening to me, but, but happens to too many people in, in Lewisham, particularly to, to black men and, and younger black men. So we commissioned Vault Fast to do a report for us, and actually I couldn't believe the numbers that were coming through. About 450 young people in Lewisham getting caught up in the criminal justice system in some way or another every single year. It's extraordinary numbers. And when you look at, we had, we had 49 children come to our youth offending service um, for first time drug possession. 43 of those 49 were children from black, Asian, minority ethnic backgrounds, majority, majority black, including all children um, who were given custodial sentences, no, no white children. So, so clearly for a borough like Lewisham, we need to find another way. Yeah, I, I think it's, um, I think the evidence is clear and it kind of speaks for itself. And with, with this diversion scheme, I think that was, um, that was what was so frustrating about it, was the fact that um, it's an evidence gathering exercise, not wide scale policy change. And like you mentioned, when you actually go, go ahead and explain what the, what the scheme's about, it's not controversial, it's not, um, it's not something that you know should be um, uh, should, should be conflated, um, but I guess kind of go, going on with what you what you've said, what has it been um, like speaking out about this as um, as a politician? Um, obviously, um, drug policy is quite a um, controversial topic and quite difficult to uh, get a message across, um, especially with a, a conservative government at the moment. So, yeah, what, what has it been like uh, to kind of embrace this as an issue? I think there's been, it's, there's been different areas where this discussion has been had. In some areas, we've had more progress. So with my councillors, for example, the overwhelming majority support the idea of a drug diversion programme. People, and I understand it, they had questions when, when, the, leak was, when the leak was announced. Residents... And I was, I was a bit brave because I put it in my manifesto that we will look at and, and pursue this. But when I've been knocking on doors, we had the elections in May. Again, people get it, people support it, particularly in Lewisham. Where it's been more of a challenge, though, is probably as you go up through the kind of political establishment, as it were. And, and, I, and I think it's... Um, obviously, there is a discussion being had within the Labour Party. We're still way out from an election. Um, but I think there still hasn't been movement. There, there is a bit more open-mindedness when you talk about the idea of a diversion program. You know, they do exist, as, 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 Kojo, as Kojo said, hasn't been implemented in, in London yet. There is another complication to it in that part of the government cuts has meant that where each council, each London borough, used to have our own like, policing unit, now we share it between three. So for Lewisham, we're with Greenwich and with Bexley. Bexley had a very different view, and in fact, their councillors are very strongly opposed. So it means when you're trying to progress with things like this, because I was like, well, can't we just go ahead with Lewisham? Maybe we can in the future, but actually you are then reliant on not just my councillors, Greenwich, Bexley, then getting signed off from, from the mayor's office. So that, so that process to getting there, it's, there's still hurdles in the way. Yeah, no, and it, um, it's, it, it's, it's frustrating to see that there's, there's still hurdles with all of this. Um, and I guess a question to both of you, maybe I'll, I'll go to Kojo first. Um, what, I mean, we, I think we've kind of established that as much as diversion isn't a controversial topic, it's still very much perceived to be one in the UK. What do you think can be done to change these kind of lingering negative perceptions? I think a lot of the evidence work that Damien and other leading figures in this area are doing is, is really what's going to shift the public perception, I think. First of all, the public perception is shifting already. Um, you know, there is a disconnect between the kind of official mainstream narrative that we might encounter from politicians or from the media and the polling of the general public that was established by YouGov recently, which saw a majority of people in support of cannabis legalization, never mind decrim or even a diversion scheme. So we have to recognize there is already a disconnect. But in terms of being able to provide a much broader understanding of what a diversion scheme could facilitate. I think really emphasizing the cost of um, putting people through the criminal justice system for something like cannabis is a good way, I think, of shifting that public dial. Um, it's up to 65,000 people. 65,000 pounds per annum it costs to imprison someone in the United Kingdom, according to the Ministry of Justice. And that doesn't seem to me to be a very efficient use of public funds, particularly in this moment of economic crisis for something like cannabis. And I think also telling those personal stories of how an early 
criminal encounter with cannabis possession can really devastate people's lives going forward for people who are 16, 17, 18 years old. Even if it doesn't result in you know, a, a prison sentence, it can result in um, the inability to travel overseas. It can result, that, that criminal conviction can lead to an inability to um, be able to apply for a whole swathe of jobs because this is something that's always going to show up on your DBS check. And so it can have devastating impacts on people's lives for decades after they've had that conviction. So I think telling that story in combination with talking about the economic cost of spending upon trying to criminalize those people, I think can make the general public understand that there must be better ways to do this, especially when we look at the evidence from the different counties in the United Kingdom that have already done diversion schemes and from the places all across the world that have taken even more radical um, reform approaches to their cannabis laws. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree, and I think um, I think the, the kind of taking a health-based approach is really, really important. Um, and I think honing in on the fact that you know by not criminalising people for low-level possession offences of cannabis, uh, police time can be freed up to deal with you know more violent and dangerous crime, which is we see of concern um, in London. I'm not sure if you've got any other points that you'd like to raise, Damien. I think in particular, I'd be interested um, off the back of what Kojo was saying about um, polling and the fact that we're seeing that public opinion is. It, it's changed, um, and people are, you know, pro, uh, not even just diversion, but legalization. What, you know, what's political appetite like? Are you seeing a shift um, amongst policymakers in, in their views towards this? So definitely I can recognize that shift of the public, because when you have those arguments, the key word is evidence, and when you stop bringing it back to, look, we just want to follow the evidence, we just want to follow the health-based outcomes. And Lewisham won't be different from so many parts of London when it is... Genuinely, you, you, you cannot stress how difficult it is for our young people to, to get on, find a job that means that they can, can basically pay their mortgage, pay their bills, pay their rent, whatever it is, and stay in London. Trying to start that off with a criminal record, add into that the, the, the majority, as we've seen from Lewisham, um, of, of young people getting, getting caught, getting um, criminal proceedings are, are young black men. You know, add that together, it makes it, I don't want to say virtually impossible, but, but can you imagine those people getting then, it unlocks the doors to them to get jobs in, jobs in the city. So actually, I, I really think the public get it. I do so many public meetings with our, with our residents, you'll get the odd question on it. It's the policy makers, and I think there is still nervousness, there's still some timidity, and... It's interesting because we do have so many international examples that you think we should be drawing on these examples to, to, to get best practice. Elections, what could, could be as far away as, as, as 2024, I, I think from, from a Labour perspective, the Labour Party will be trying to position itself to win certain seats. And I think, I think they're still trying to understanding what people in those, in those seats think. And, and I understand that. I think that's valid because I, I think the most, from, from my, I'm obviously biased, but for me it's so important that we get a Labour government to get proper funding into public services and, and really be able to support residents. So I, I get that focus as, as the end, up, end goal. But I also think it's probably causing a bit of apprehension about how we move on, on some of these ideas that people perceive as, 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 as radical, even though we're you know, saying it's about evidence, it's about health, and it's about people. Yeah, definitely. I guess as well, if, um, if politicians are made aware that maybe it's not as controversial as a topic as you know, they, they think it is, um, and the fact that kind of cannabis is potentially a vote winner, then their perceptions and, and thoughts might... Um, might change around that. Um, and I guess another question to both of you um, is uh, kind of, I guess, what, what next and what can we expect from all of this? Do you think that these diversion schemes are kind of a sign of the times and maybe the fact that um, the UK is, you know, well, I think it's, uh, it's undoubtable that the UK needs um, better drug policies and drug reform, but do you think that this could result in kind of broader calls for reform um, based on what we've seen? I guess I'll start with you, Kojo. Um, certainly, I think that a lot of the, if, you know, to combine it with an earlier question, I think a lot of the controversy, a lot of the backlash, a lot of the hostility to the announcement of potential diversion schemes in London, as well as the commission the city Khan was initiating, was a uh, kind of a, a, a precursory warning shot in anticipation of a much broader debate around cannabis 
legalization and much broader drug policy reform that's coming to the UK in the near future. And I think that, you know, there's a recognition that looking across the world, you know, from the US to Canada to Germany to Thailand, there's really, really, you know, dramatic shifts in terms of cannabis legalization, the UK is falling behind this conversation that we are going to have to have this debate, we are going to have to have this argument, not just about cannabis, but about decrim in relationship to a, you know, a whole swathe of drugs. The Misuse of Drugs Act has now just re gone past its 50th anniversary and has you know, clearly um, exceeded its, 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 its relevance in terms of the context in which it was drafted and implemented. This has to have a general conversation. And I think that whilst there was no response almost or no mainstream response to diversion schemes being implemented in, like I say, Durham and Devon and a lot of these other places, when it came to London, I think a lot of the, the pushback wasn't against diversion schemes, but against this coming specter of a much broader debate around drug policy reform that I think we all need to be get ready for. For me, my priority has to be getting this diversion scheme off the ground and getting it running. So we know we've got the support of, of Sadiq, which is, it's fantastic that we've got a Mayor of London who's actually out there advocating, visiting cannabis farms when he was over in the US. So he's coming from a, from a, evidence, a, a place of evidence. My challenge will be, how do we get those other local councils to agree? Um, do we need all of them to agree? So I have posed the question, if, if they don't, is this something we can go ahead with in Lewisham? That, that creates a very practical policing question, because of, obviously with the police operating across the three boroughs, what do you do if you've, if you've arrested and caught someone on, on one side of the road, which might be Lewisham, and then the other side of the road is, is Greenwich? But these are kind of like, that's where the bureaucracy kicks in. And again, we have to bring it back to people. We, we had to pause things. Um, until the elections were, the local elections were out the way. They're out the way. We've got some new, new, new leadership in, in one of the boroughs. And I hope that in that time that we've had, this being six months in Lewisham, that I can convince those other leaders that actually when we have made the case, when we've talked to people, people really do get it. And actually they, they don't need to be so, what, so worried about it because this is, again, it's, a, it's about people. It's about, without being dramatic, it, it's actually about saving lives. And... Um, I tried to go back to something like Pretty Patel was very, very vocal about it. And um, but, so bring it back, it's about jobs and skills. If we can move people, you know, this is a market that's controlled by criminal gangs. How can the status quo be something that we accept? And if it means pulling children, if we can try and pull them away from those gangs, put them in diversion schemes, give them education, um, let them make their own choices, and, and importantly, try and get them on a track for getting a job, getting skills. That has to be that has to be a better way. And I'm sure, with the international evidence, it, you'd imagine it only has to be a matter of time. And if we make those cases, keep it rooted in evidence. I really hope that we can make some progress. Absolutely. And I think, yeah, it all, it all goes back to evidence. I mean, we've, we have emerging evidence from various jurisdictions uh, across the world for um, why we would, you know, benefit from cannabis reform. But I think specifically with this diversion scheme as well, it, it, it would be about gathering evidence. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's really important to kind of hone in, on, hone in on that. And so how realistic do you think all of this is going forward? Do you see, are you, um, are you quite optimistic about um, this kind of launching and, and getting started in London um, soon? <laughs> I hope, I, I hope so because I, I don't. I can't see the. I, I can't see what's holding us. But I mean, I can see from a political way, but I can't see from a kind of the, the human perspective. So, you, so you think it can? I guess if there, I'm disappointed by by some of that some of that reaction because I think it is kind of holding back a wider debate. But let's let's try and get this over the line. I'm optimistic if we can make that case and also if we're disciplined in, in kind of how we're saying it, but I, but I think the kind of the movement for reform is and, and we're learning that and we can, we can reassure people along the way. Amazing. And um, I guess just one, one last thing from you, Kojo, is just around um, diversion and do you think this is the kind of end goal um, or do you think that the UK would benefit from, from further reform? I mean, I think that it's a fantastic goal, it's a fantastic start, it's something that already exists and it's something that we should roll out across London boroughs. I think that it's fantastic the work that you're doing, Damien, leading on that in Lewisham. But I think um, 
With diversion schemes, we're trying to stop people entering into the criminal justice system as a result of drug possession in the drug industry. We also, at some point, do need to think about the people who have already been caught in the criminal justice system. Many, you know, for years and years, whether it's in terms of prison rates, in terms of convictions that have now expired but still affect, like I say, the ability to get visas to travel to other countries, the ability to be able to apply for certain jobs that they won't be DBS barred from, when we think about how legalization has been rolled out across the United States of America, we of course know that there are some states that have really taken that situation and that conversation to a, to a, to a, to a, you know, to a point of confrontation where they implement social equity programs. I think we're going to hear a little bit more about that from some of the speakers later today. But where you look at people who have been caught up in the criminal justice system and who are being reintegrated into society through changing the drug laws. So I think diversion schemes is fantastic to stop more people falling into the criminal justice system. But I don't think that it should be our end point in terms of our long-term vision. Thank you, Kojo and Damien. This has been really, really interesting. I'm um, really glad we've been having this discussion at Cannabis Europa today, as I think uh, the importance of diversion and, and addressing these issues of social justice is really at the heart um, of cannabis reform. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see what's, uh, what's going to happen going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.